Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem, this is Foundry VTT version 12, and this is Curse of Strahd. Uh, it's been a hot minute, we've um, obviously been doing some videos on other bits and bobs and having a look at some other things, um, but we've got to carry on building, so this is a building video, Curse of Strahd, and just because it has been a hot minute, um, just a bit of a refresher, so we have already done all of our beginning bits, moving along the old Svalich Road to the village of Barovia via the Death House, um, up to the River Ivlis Crossroad to Sir Paul and making their way all the way along this road to Valaki. So that is where we are. We're at Valaki, effectively into Act 2. Now, as a reminder, we are following the Strad Reloaded um, version of the adventure. So we need that Strad Reloaded, which is free. Google it, Strad Reloaded, you'll find it. Um, but we do need a copy of the official adventure as well. Um, so, Foundry VTT, here we are. Uh, so, if I go to my Act 1, the Into the Valley, we got all of this finished, the Sir Pauls, the West Gate, uh, and all of those bits are already in there. But what we need to do is we need to build out the town of Velaki. So, all I've done is go through and just check i've got the maps now i'm using aeon bars maps free again aeon bars curse of strad maps um because they are they work <laughs> they're really nice um i like the theme there's lots of other maps you can use of course but that's what we're using in this one and we had already created the east gate and the blue water inn so i've just created the rest of the scenes that we need to do um but you can see they're all blank because i haven't done anything with them apart from create them as names so first thing i want to do is uh i have decided i want to put a map in for the town so uh, that's what this video is going to be and i know it's not for everybody and that's absolutely fine of course uh if you're not interested in watching me build stuff um Go do something else. <laughs> okay, go do something more interesting with your time than than watch me build adventures. Um, I'm not going to be offended. That's absolutely no problem at all. So I'm literally going to be building these, putting in walls, lightings, and things like that. Now there might be a few bits that I sort of speed run as we get a little bit. Um, you know, it might get a little bit laborious. You just watching me do the same thing again and again. Um, but again, I know some of you like that. Um, great I, I must say i enjoy the building process um it's part of the it's, it's part of the fun for me is actually building the damn stuff uh you just hope obviously the players eventually get there um right what am i doing what am i doing i'm doing the map there we go map okay let's just bring that in nice and easy and we're all the way over there excellent uh, so this is going to be a map that they're going to be able to look at um, that is available through their home screen. But I wanted to stick this on just so that it was always going to be a copy of the map easily available for me to pull up. I don't suspect I'll need to use this scene very often um, because they have got access to this map in their journal once they get here and also through their landing page. Um, but yeah, let's just have this here to make sure we've got one if we need it it's about being it's about that being prepared isn't it there we go that's all we need scene done <laughs> oh no it's not of course it's not right I need to check things like lighting token vision no fog exploration no we do want global illumination thank you very much otherwise they won't be able to see it there we go and we could put mist and stuff over the top of it i don't think that adds anything for this easy peasy let's move on town square now there's going to be other things that happen in the town square. Now bearing in mind, because just try and keep this this type of video flowing, there will be details I miss. I know there's a couple of you who particularly like watching these to pull, point out, and I don't blame you at all, point out where I go wrong. It's like, you haven't done this? It's like, oh really? <laughs> I've missed a door, <laughs> I've missed a window, and things like that. That's fine. It's all part of the fun. Um, if that's how you get your jollies, I'm all for it. Okay, so again, this is not going to be a, a difficult uh, scene to do. Um, it's just going to be one of these. What we do want to do, of course, is make sure that we've got things like our... Do we want token vision on? Do we want fog exploration? Um, I do want global illumination for it. I think I will leave token vision on, actually, for this. Um, because there could be people later on. The town square gets used for a number of different things. So I want to make sure it's 
ready for all of those different things that could happen. Um, now obviously I need to look at grid on this and we need to get that grid sensible. So if I just zoom in a bit, so when we do the grid, so I'm going to go to my grid, I'm going to make it red because it's so much easier for you guys to see and make sure that's there. How big is that grid relevant to our player characters? Well here's a cart. Um, you might suggest that that is too big, is it? I don't know. I don't know, is that, is that a hand cart or is that a person cart? Let's uh... <laughs> Every time I do it the wrong way, don't I, idiot? <laughs> make that 200 I think that's a bit more likely isn't it just looking at the size of the houses and things yep I think that's a better size we can slap a token on there just to kind of um, bring that home a bit Alwyn here we go yeah so if we look at the size of this door here these stairs here um, we can fit a token pretty much one token up those stairs which is what you would expect to have in a majority of of homes if you think of your own home the doorways are designed for one person to go through at a time aren't they most of the doors so um, yeah happy with that let's uh, get rid of again you and the of course it's completely up to you whether you leave the grid on I like to have grids but I like to have them invisible so they're moving on grids it works for for combat for measuring distances and everything else um, it stops things getting jumbled up uh, but I don't like them interrupting my scenes so we'll get rid of that anything else we like to do uh, do we want to add any ambiance or anything our lighting we already said was global illumination we're going to leave that on do we want any weather effects here a little bit of rain I don't think we're going to I don't I'm just what I need to decide because this is all one village is if I have rain on, I would have rain on everywhere. But I think Vlaki, I want it to feel, while it's still got a lot of the troubles, I want it to feel less oppressive than Barovia and the house, uh, the castle, um, castle Ravenloft. So it feels a bit more like a town in desperation. There's plenty of action that happens here. So I think we might be good to go with that. Nice and easy. This is what I mean. So, you know, building some of these scenes is really straightforward. Uh, we've got the church this is going to take a little bit more effort for us so let's bring in our uh, St oh, there we go see now we've got a number of different oh whoops a daisy me and my clicking we've got a number of different areas here so we've got a ground floor uh, and we've got a modest and we've got an opulent version. So we want to go with the modest version for now. But you can see we've got roofs and things like that we can add on. So we're going to do that for this level. So let's bring that in. Um, yeah, just checking I was putting stuff in the right place. Get cross with myself if I'm not. Thank you. That took a, took a hot minute. So this is quite a big one. So again, let's do that grid first. Now we've got double doors down here, which is really handy for helping us do our grids and for sizing things appropriately. Now there's a good chance that these are going to be pretty much on the money anyway, just because of the way these maps are made. Now I would argue again, I'm going to go the correct direction this time. We want that. Ta -da, there we go. So five foot per door is about perfect and it's beautifully lined up already for everything which is good now one thing i didn't do in the town square is i didn't do any walls and we probably want to do walls don't we stop people from accidentally wandering their token through shops <laughs> let's go back and do that come on you know you love the chaos you know, i never at any point pretended to be a professional and any of you who says I did is a liar. <laughs> All right, so we're going to use invisible walls because I want people to still be able to um, see all of the scenery. So we can easily just do uh, hold down control, invisible walls, and pop them around these buildings. It just stops the players from... Let's connect that up. It just stops the players from walking into these buildings. You know, and effectively climbing over the roof sort of thing, which wouldn't make sense. Uh, 
and you can tell I'm concentrating because I stopped talking. <laughs> Do, do, do. It doesn't have to be perfect because they can't see these walls. It's not going to be blocking vision or anything like that. It's literally to stop the tokens from moving over buildings. Now, some of these buildings may well be ones that they go into for some reason. Um, fine. Absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. A little bit janky over here. I'm not snapping to grid either before somebody in the comments says, why don't you just use snap to grid? Because uh, these buildings aren't necessarily aligned to the grid. Um, which again is fine because it doesn't matter. But uh, if I do snap to grid, actually it's just going to be slightly more difficult to line it up. So, And again, invisible walls, they're just a block movement. So it doesn't matter that they're not lined up perfectly. They just need to stop, like I say, characters deciding to walk over the top of a building. Da, 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 da. That's enough. I know it's a shambles. And somebody's probably also going to make the comment that I'm actually using one of the options for walling <laughs> apart from just using normal walls I normally use normal walls and then change them afterwards but because these are all invisible walls I might as well go straight to using the uh, the invisible wall tool um, sometimes I forget about it for whatever reason other times I find it's just easier for me for my little brain to just slap down all of the walls and then uh, then go back and convert the ones that need to be doors but as we know, that often leads to me missing a door, forgetting to do it. I suppose if I was really sensible, the better way to do it would be to go... Th go away. Uh, the better way to do it would be for me to go through, put in all the doors, put in all the windows, and then do the walls. That was probably would solve my problem of keep missing doors, right? Might not. <laughs> I'm not that clever. There we go. All right. So, um, and again, for here, is there anywhere that we want to potentially stop the characters from walking? Well, no, they can come under the bunting. Um, and if they want to get in the water, they can. So I don't see that's necessary at all. We don't need to wall off the well. If they want to climb on it, we can move their token on there. I think that's all we need to do. I think that's absolutely just fine. All right. So back to the church, which is what got me on to realizing that uh, I hadn't done any walls. Um, we want levels for this. So I'm just checking in my other screen again. Ugh, I've done something horrible with that screen. Hang on a second. Um, how many levels do we want? So we've got the church and then we've got some overlays, but there's actually only two levels. No, three levels. We've got the ground floor we're looking at. We've got the um, belfry. And then we've got the roof, so um, we want open our um, rippers levels here. Uh, we want to add on two levels. This is going to be ground, and this one's going to be well. We can just call this belfry. So the ground is going to be from zero to let's say 20 and the belfry is going to be from 20 not 200 from 20 to 40 uh, I've made it you know does it matter probably not um, I've made it a bit higher because it is a bit higher I mean it's a church it's probably more like 40 let's, let's do it and then this will be 40 to something like 60 okay big high ceilings all right so we can do that Turn off edit for it. This is our ground floor. Now, what else do I need to put on ground floor? There are some overlays and things that we can put on um, for this. So this is where we're going to do something we don't normally or haven't really done before. Um, in this is we're going to open a tile browser. Hello? Okay, my machine's a bit slow today. I wonder what that's about. 
Um, I'm going to go to, uh, let's create a new folder for, oh no, we can stick them all in here. No, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, what I want to pull up is uh, tomb one. And I'm going to pop that over there. Okay. Um, let's get tomb two. And we're going to pop that over there. Now these are tiles, remember, and then we want tomb three that we're going to pop over here. Okay, so get rid of that. So for tile one, this one here, what we can do is we can make this an overhead tile. So if it's an overhead tile, it means that we can, well, hang on. Are they actually... So they might actually go in there. So if you make this an overhead tile, it should disappear when they actually come in here. So the elevation, let's make that at... Uh, 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 restricts weather, yes. Uh, restricts light, yes. It's an overhead in the foreground. Um, yeah, let's, let's do that. I'm not sure. Like I say, we don't normally use these, so let's let's check. That's the best way to do anything, isn't it? So, got no lights. <laughs> Who turned out the lights? Uh, token vision, yes. Fog exploration, oh yes. Um, but we do want global illumination, even if we choose to make it much darker. Okay, so what we want is for this to be... I might need to put it on the higher level. So we want Haley to be able to see this. So we can see this one. But it's because I've, I've, yeah, I've put it up too high. Okay, that's fine. Let's, um, this is where it's obvious. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, yeah, because uh, it's slightly different than it used to be with the overhead tiles. So this entire tile, uh, there used to be a is overhead tile trigger. It was simple as that. Oh, I'm a silly boy. I'm a silly boy. I'm going to get rid of that. Over here, on the right-hand side, I know what I want to do, is uh, I want to be on the ground floor, but I want to do the roof's view placement. And I want to, I want to go back to here. Gosh. Uh, and I want to take that first one and I want to place that on. So I've placed that as a roof. So now if I toggle roofs on off. Okay. So looking at this tile now, um, its elevation is 40, okay, which is fine. That's not a problem. Um, so now if Haley moves, it disappears. That's what we want, isn't it? Yeah. That's how we want that to work. Bosh. Good. All right. Happy with that. So um, now I need to just do the same with these other two. So let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. We go back. We still get our roofs on. <gasps> Why is my tile opener taking so long? Might be because I've got quite a lot of other things open at the moment on the machine, which is probably foolish. So we can slap that one on there and we can slap that one on there. They both go on as roofs. If we toggle roofs on and off, there we go. Right, so that's sorted. That was quite easy as it turns out. Now we do need to, uh, was there anything else we need to put at that level? Um, so we've got some other images. We've got the church. Yeah, we have. So again, um, I'm not exactly sure where that fits. Let's have a look. Is it to go over there? Ah, uh, that see, that, that's the whole overlay, right? I see what they've done. So we've done it as three separate tiles, but they've actually got one tile that we could use for the whole thing. As a roof, what we're going to do is we're going to also place in a tree here. And again, we don't normally do this with trees. We leave the stumps because, like, who cares? But as we're here and we're doing this, we're going to use this one, and then we're going to slap that right over there and then the other tree is in the middle here so again we can go to here we're going to use tree one 
and we're going to slap that over there. So again, we can toggle the roofs on and off. Lovely. It just means if they walk under the tree, the rest of the tree will disappear and make life a bit easier. Um, so we now want to go to the belfry. So we've gone up a layer. Uh, and here we want to put in our actual belfry itself. So again, just uh, wait for that to open. Here we go. It's an Andal Andrews Church Belfry and no lighting. And then we're going to drag that over about there. Bosh, that's just about perfect. Also, those of you paying attention will notice I accidentally just placed that as a roof. So let's get rid of it. Place it again. Line that up. Excellent. Um, so that's lined up there. Now there is actually a roof for here. So let's click on the roof placement. And then we want this belfry here. Belfry roof. Job done. So there we go. The roof disappears when we're up there. That's, I'm going to say that's perfect, but you know, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right, cool. Um, now, there is a couple of other things on here. There's a belfry overlay. Um, ah, I see. Yeah. So, again, what we can do is um, we have. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put that in as well because that's you got a belfry, you've got no bells in the belfry. I'm just wondering. There's two versions of it, and I'm not sure why there's two versions of it. Um, that's what was kind of confusing me. See what I mean? Um, doesn't matter. They're actually both exactly the same, but we can bring that in and slap that in there. Now the reason why that is separate is because they want the players to be able to walk under that. Um, so we can set the height of that so that players can walk under. And I think if we do that as an overhead uh, and call it 50, that should give us that ability. And again, what we need to do, of course, is just drag out a... Whip. Let's make sure we keep that open on the belfry layer. Drag out Haley. Yeah, she can't see it if she's actually up here. So that's not what I want to do. Um... I'm going to just call it 40. I'm going to leave it there because they can just walk past it. So I'm just not going to put a wall there because I'm going to describe what it looks like. So that's not a problem. So we're going to do that. All right. Whew. So now we need to do some walls. We've got all our images in and everything else. We need to do some walls and some of them are going to be quite simple, of course. Uh, and these are going to be normal walls. Um, do you know what? I'm going to put I'm going I'm going to put the grid bleh, I'm going to put the grid on for doing these walls, uh, just because not darkness level you map it. I'm going to put the grid on because it just makes it easier for me to see what's aligned and what's not. So for example, right here I can just make sure I'm aligned to grid. Bosh, bosh, bosh. I know I can hold shift to do that. Again, somebody's going to. Point that out correctly in the comments. What you're doing. There we go. And so this is going to be a... Uh, this is going to be a door. Uh, it's going to be closed. Um, I'm going to say it's locked for the moment. We'll sort out whether that is true or not. Um, and also, I'm going to just say that it's metal... What we are not sure of yet, because again, I, what I don't want to do is keep referring to the module because then you're just listening to me do nothing while I read and that's boring. So I'll come back and check all these. Now it might be that this is a grated see-through um, or it might be a like a, a stone door, etc. So I can come back and make those alterations afterwards. Now what's going to be really easy is for me to go copy and paste these in over here um, and actually it's going to be just as easy for me to do new walls here I 
and then wee wiggly and again I'm just going to change that to a door that is locked um, and again I'm just going to put that let's put stone on okay and I'll come back and check them all okay so that's nice and easy um, and now we've got the main church and again it's just going to be basically repeating that process and of course we've got windows here so there's me talking about it um, about you know oh there are better ways I could do this how about I actually listen to myself for once? These ones up the side are nice because they conveniently very light, very well aligned to the grid. These are all my windows. What is? <laughs> it's because that one's not aligned to the grid. Stupid boy! I'm trying to make force it. Let's do all the ones aligned to the grid first because that's the way I roll. You can just smack them in, smack them in. Um, cool, I'm not holding anything to do these, just smacking them in. Um, and then of course I can turn off snap to grid, so I still get some snapping but I don't get uh, snapping to the grid, I just get snapping to stuff. If I hold down shift, I get no snapping. So I, I, because I'm a Muppet, find it harder to get it to line up properly if I do it that way. So rather than holding shift, I just turn off the snap to grid and that way it will snap to these points, which is not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than just using shift which gives completely free reign. Have I missed any windows? Yes I have. Tiny little ones down here. That one's a bit too big. Shrink you somewhat. Okay let's do doors. Muppet tree. Uh, where are other doors? No doors there, no doors there, just on the side over here. And of course we can snap to grid for those. Easy. Uh, and now we've just got normal walls. So uh, yeah, let's do all of the let's do all the snap ones first. Idiot. Hang on, what am I doing? Thank you. Stop doing it. See, I'm a Muppet even when I try and do it this way. <laughs> and of course, there's some inter internal doors there. I've spotted them. I've seen them. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? I, f I just find this very therapeutic. See, here, now if I use Shift, this is where I sometimes end up with gaps in the walls. Um, so I'm going to come back and adjust those in a moment. Because I do want the points to snap together. And I know there's other tools that you can use. Um, uh, is it Monk's Better Walls or something? There are other tools you can use. I'm not using them. Why? Because... I. I can't tell you why. I don't have a good excuse, to be honest. <laughs> uh, and of course, these ones as well. Another door there, of course. Okay, okay. Now, if I turn the uh, turn the snap to grid off, I can just come and fix a couple of these little ones. So, as I said, I still want the snapping on, so that I snap to those points appropriately. No. Thank you. I know it's a tiny little one; probably doesn't make any difference, but I'm doing it anyway. But yeah, then they do snap together quite nicely. So all the way down here looks good. Didn't need to do an extra wall, could I? I could just drag that one and snap it on. Stupid boy! 
So again, without using shift, it will snap to those nodes. Because we're going to do the regions for the weather soon. And as we've seen before, if bear with me while I muppetry, um, as we've seen before, um, sometimes when we do regions, we end up with gaps in it and it won't pick up the region very well because there's a little gap between the walls. And that's because the nodes haven't actually connected themselves properly. Um, so doing it this way, I'm much more guaranteed to get those, you know, these corners are actually on top of each other. I don't, I'm less likely to have to go back and make adjustments because uh, I did something stupid. You know, just like small little misclick just out by a few pixels and suddenly you can't use your region and you have to go and fix it. Okay, so we've got all of those done. Uh, we do need to put in these interior doors. Let's put our snapping back on for this. There we go. There's an interior door, interior door, interior door, interior door, interior door. I've got our windows there. Doors, that's all looks good. Slightly paranoid about missing stuff. <laughs> uh, interior door. I've missed a whole wall out here. Um, we can use snapping on, which is great. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Got everything. I think. I think you'll. I know you will let me know if I've missed something. Uh, now it's just a pulpit. So what we can do is we can put an invisible wall here uh, just to kind of show that that is sort of elevated. So you kind of go round up the stairs to get onto it. Of course players can climb over it um, if they want to. We're going to have a similar kind of thing over here, aren't we? Is um, That's going to be you know, up the steps. To, so that's really not accessible. Um, yes, they can climb over it. But the idea is they come up the steps to the bench or they come down the steps to the bench. Okay, anywhere else we've got anything little jiggery pokery like that. Um, we've got all these benches and things like that. We don't need to worry about. Um, you know, just looking at the grid scale. You get one character per bench. Looks a bit weird. Um, you could argue that these are, you know, that's 20 foot wide. That's a hell of a size door. I'm leaving it as is. I'm not going to change that. Um, yeah, that'd be silly. Okay, so that's all good. Um, the ground floor, I think, is all done. What we do need to do is do something about these stairs. So these stairs are going, well, they look like these stairs are going up because they lead to the belfry. Yes, directly above. Okay, so let's, um, on our layers tool, we want to go to place drawings as stairs. We are going to place that right there. Now what we can do is we can change the text and things if we want to. Sometimes it's just, it doesn't really matter. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going, it is already hidden. I'm going to keep that hidden. Um, so the players will come up this door come up this door around here once they hit there it will pop them up here now again just talking about walls we've got to do upstairs here i'm going to put some invisible walls in yeah because we're not aligned to the grid in the same way up here of course so turn that off still want my snapping on just not snapping to grid there we go that will stop anybody from flying out of the belfry now these are all shutters so we're going to use windows for these um, put my grid on my snap to no because none of it snapped to grid They're all misaligned exactly which is not a problem but okay so we're gonna put that in we're gonna put that in that one is on the grid that was not that one is there we go Now, when you look at church belfries, I know these look like little wooden shutters, don't they? And they may well be. And we can absolutely treat them like that. 
Um, but often they're more sort of slatted for airflow and things like that. So it's up to you exactly how you sort of choose to do this. Come on, line up, git. Um, it's, yeah, so it's up to you how you choose to do this. You might find that this um, making it a window see-through isn't right. You might want to make it doors so that they are like shutters and they can open them and the party can, if they want to, pile out onto the roof. Sure, fine. That's not wrong. It's however you want to do it. And again, so rather than using shift, I'm using control to get my continuing line. But I don't want to use shift because then it won't snap to these other nodes as easily. And then I get into all sorts of trouble when it comes to doing the regions. And we're going to do the regions in just a moment. Now somebody did ask in a comments video about, um, and we, we had to play with it. We were trying to solve that problem and we couldn't. Um, was where you've got, say, a upper story that is bigger than the ground floor. And you might want to have something like fog on the ground floor, um, but not indoors. And you can do that. But then when you put a weather mask on for the upper floor, which is bigger, that mask it basically travels all the way to the ground and all the way up to the sky. So you end up with a shadow. And we did have it in one of our other bits. Was it the Blue Water Inn? We got an example of that. Where if you yeah, if you look at if you look at the roof, we've got this bit that covers it over. Okay, because it's over this part of the building. But the ground floor, we've just got the supporting pillars. Now, what we can't do is have weather on the ground floor, so we can't have fog drifting through under this bit because the weather mask for this part of the building, regardless of what we want it to do, extends down. So we, we basically can't do it. Now, we tried it with regions. The answer is no. And we tried it with FX Master as well to see if we could use that. Um, and I did speak to... Um, well, because it's part of the... Um, the levels I did speak to Ripper about is there a way to do it and the answer basically is no because of the way that Foundry works Foundry does not work in 3D so you know Ripper's module makes it look like it's 3D but it's not it's a two-dimensional plane so we can't do that with the weather effects just in case you're interested and you're wondering um, yeah we do we do try we, we do what we can to, uh, you know. And, and again, it's, it's really not a, not a deal breaker, is it? It's it's not. All right, let's get rid of Haley. I didn't want to do that. Get rid of Haley. Get out of there. All right, so um, we can do whatever we like with regard to weather and stuff if we want to. But what I do want to do instead is I want to create that region so that if we choose... No, not stairs. If we decide to put weather on, it is going to, uh, we're going to be able to automatically have it excluding the, um, I'm concentrating again, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> see what I mean? There's obviously a gap in my wall somewhere. So it's going, oh yeah, I can see the region you want, but it's not picking up the main part of the church. So somewhere I've got gaps in my walls. Oh, it's so annoying. I mean, you know, you could argue that it's really useful because it tells you where your gaps are. <laughs> but it's more likely that I've missed a window or something. That all looks good. All of these look good. All of these look good over here. It's most likely to be a corner. Yep. Here it is. So that tiny little misalignment stuffs up your regions. Okay, so let's try that again. Um, 
get rid of all of these regions that we don't want to have multiple different regions if we can help it not for the weather mask okay so let's try that again we're going to add on we are going to select all of those walls click our plus yeah there we go so it's just that one little gap that causes that problem um, so we've got that now our behavior that we want we don't want to execute a script for this what we want to do is just uh, suppress the weather um, thank you very much and of course what we can choose to do is to adjust that darkness level and just take it down a bit and just darken it a little bit so the inside is always slightly darker than outside of the building that makes sense and because that's what I was just saying that weather mask will cover the belfry as well okay so any rain we chuck on and we of course we can check it it's really easy to check this we just go to ambiance and we pick our weather effect pick a rainstorm uh, and then with our levels on well on the ground floor it is not raining indoors which is what we want um, and it's not raining in the belfry it is raining in here though isn't it now if we put a weather mask over to stop this raining inside here it's also going to stop it raining on the roof like this okay so we're going to lose you know it's, this is not quite so bad we don't need to worry about this so much but um yeah we don't want it looking like it's not raining in those silly little squares but yeah we can't stop we can't stop this we want it raining on this roof we can't do anything about that so there we go okay so um i'll be good i think we're good what do i need to do here lights apologies discord is just kicking off so there's some people waking up <laughs> Okay, we need to. I wish layers would stop, um, levels would stop posing all the time. Yes, please go away. We don't need all your notifications all of the time. Um, we need some lighting. We need some lighting. So we've got lots of candlesticks here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to pull those out. We're going to pull them out to forty. And in here, we're going to say that the dim light is out. Oh, 5, 10, 15, no, 20, stupid boy. Um, and we're going to give it the bright light out till out to 5. Uh, and then what we can do is we can give it a flicker. Torch is always good, I think. Um, and I think that's probably all we need to do. So uh, where's my, where's my Haley? So when we got Haley, that's not making a huge amount of difference because it's not very dark inside, um, and I didn't change the colour of the light, and that makes a big difference for these because it's just providing light. That's a bit more like it, isn't it? Maybe you want something slightly more yellow than that. There we go. And then we can just place this again. If we hold shift, we can be more precise. We can slap that where we want to. Now, hover over, because you can't select the light unless you double click it, but hover over so it's highlighted. We can do a control C, and then we can just control V those everywhere we've got one of these candlesticks. Um, it doesn't mean they have to be on all the time. But if they're there, it makes it really, really quick and easy to be able to come and light them. Now, they're not lining up perfectly. I'm going to go back and do that in a minute. Just want to make sure we've got all of the candlesticks out that we would want. Okay, so then we can just yeah hold down shift and just align these. So the center of the light bulb is pretty much over where the candles are. Those are fine, those are fine. Those are fine, those look fine, those look fine. That one looks alright, that one looks alright. These ones I want to adjust a bit because we're off to one side. 
That one looks fine. That one looks fine. Probably missed some. Right, some of these side rooms, have we got them? We have got some lamps, so we're going to go back and do those in a minute. Yep, that's all good. So, yeah, we've got these little lamps here, which are like bedside lights. So we're going to do these slightly differently, um, just to give some variation. Now, again, we do want to give it a colour, because the colour makes a huge amount of difference to these lights. Um, it's difficult to get a bright kind of yellow. Let's give it that. That's pretty good. Um, and we're going to stick on a torch, but I'm going to put up the animation speed just so these look significantly more different than the others. Um, we're going to give it dim to 15 and we're going to give it bright to, uh, to 5. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. And then just going to hold shift to put that one in place. Now again, copy. And then everywhere I see one of those lanterns, I'm going to paste this down. And then we can decide which of these are going to be just generally on all of the time and which ones we want to turn off. But as I've said before, I like to put all of the lanterns in with a light source, um, even if they're not lit. Because the party come along, and if they say I want to light that lantern, it's a one click to put that light on. I haven't got to fiddle around trying to find, you know, like set up a new light and stuff. So I'd rather have them available, not use them, than the other way around. Okie dokie. So, realistically, we're kind of ready to go. Haven't done any NPCs or anything. We're going to do that differently in a different video. Um, but for now, I'm going to turn off these lights because they're not required to be on all the time. Absolutely not. Uh, and I think it's fair to say that unless we've actually got service going on, most of these will be off. I mean, who can afford that many candles? I mean, I know it's a church, but it's not actually necessarily a wealthy church. So I'm going to kind of... I'm going to leave those ones on so we've got this. I'm not actually. I'm going to turn them all off. If they come here during the daytime, the only lights I want on are the candles on the altar. If they come here at night, we will absolutely put some lights on. All right, so I don't think I've missed anything now. I haven't got any sounds on here, um, but we've got everything built and we've pretty much got the uh, Andrews Church completed except for NPCs um, and those bits, which we will do. Uh, the town square, we didn't look at lights for the town square. I'm not sure that there was any that we needed to worry about because there's no kind of lamps yes there are so uh there are some lamps yeah there's quite a few lamps so let's let's stick out these lamps every house has a lamp by the looks of it so i'm just going to stick those out you've got one down here and again these are going to be off a majority of the time even at night you know, it might be evening, they might have them on. Um, but there is a celebrationary festival thing that happens in the town square a bit further on in the adventure. So this will mean that they will already be, you know, th that's when they're going to have their lights on. Nighttime festival. Uh, no lights around here. Wouldn't make sense. Or rather, doesn't necessarily make sense. None there. Slap this one out here. Another one there. This one just hiding off the edge of the map there. We can stick that one on. There's one there. Sneaky little one. And on the other side. Make sure I don't blatantly miss any of these buildings. So we should see that every building has at least one lamp. They do. I'm going to turn them all off. But they're ready to go whenever we need them. Remember, preparation is everything about running a game. Um, 
but as we've said before, don't over prep. <laughs> you want to prep really, really well for what you know is coming up in the next session and a bit more and be prepared for them to go outside the box. But don't prepare six sessions in advance um, with regard to motives and story and things like that because you honestly don't know where they're going to go. And then you tend to, it's just natural. To natural human behavior you then try to end up trying to railroad them down a particular way because you're thinking i've put all this time and effort and because i wanted them to go and do this and they're not doing it so you end up trying to railroad them to justify the time you spent preparing um now all of these encounter areas in theory they will go to all of them but it, it is possible that that some of these areas they never ever go to the coffin maker's house it's like bum so i'm not going to memorize all of the plot stuff around the coffin maker's house until they are pretty much about to arrive at um Vallaki. and then i'm going to go right okay so what is in Vallaki that they need to know has their reputation preceded them you know um have the vistani been through and said hey you know watch out for this lot because they just murdered every single person in barovia I, I would need to make adjustments on that basis um but pre prepping maps and stuff yeah absolutely and characters and things okie dokie well i'm going to call this one here because i think this has been a massively long video um what have we done we have put in the Valaki map we have added the town square with lighting and walls we've built an andrews church with lighting walls its levels we've put the weather things in i haven't done any weather masking for this um, shall I quickly do that? Let's see how easy that is based on the fact that we did put the walls in. And boop. Yep, I've got some gaps. <laughs> so I, I'm going to fix those gaps off screen. I'm going to fix those little gaps. I'm going to do this so that I've got this in. And again, I can put that suppressed weather in so that if I decide, yeah, it's raining. In fact, actually, I don't want to do it with this. Because these are all roofs of houses. They're not going inside anywhere. So forget that. For, bleh, certainly don't do that. Absolute muppet. Um, yeah, I don't need to do that at all. Because it will be raining on those roofs. They're not going indoors. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much done apart from NPCs. St. Andrew's Church is done apart from NPCs. Uh, and then we've got these other ones to build out. So yeah, it takes a bit of time. But it's well worth putting the time in to do these well. Um, and get them looking just how you want to. Uh, there's so many things that we could do, of course. Busy town square, loads of NPCs, background noises and stuff like that. I'm not going to do it in this video. It's been long enough. Thank you very much for watching. Very much appreciate it. I hope the quality of this video comes out all right. I've had to have a bit of a change of setup of my machine. Um, and so I hope that the video doesn't come out too dark. Touch wood, it doesn't, and I hope the sound's okay. Um, because again, I've had to make some amendments. I start a new job on Monday, um, so my home office has had to have a bit of an overhaul and it has affected a few things. Uh, but thank you very much for watching, really appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a comment, find all the holes and things that I missed, and criticize or sorry, critique. <laughs> I'd never mind hearing your ideas of how oh, you could have done that better, you could do this more efficiently. That's really, really good. Um, and of course, if you want to subscribe, please do so hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified of upcoming videos if you also click the little bell icon but if you want to support the channel and you don't want to be spammed constantly by um, by notifications on the videos subscribe just don't click the bell cheers guys take care i'll see you in the next one